Alright, my friends, here is one done by Silver Bullet. It is called It Never Rains, But It Pours. Stardate 2242.9. Starfleet's next generation heavy cruiser is behind schedule. Admiral Ramirez himself arrives to deal with the problem. In an office at the shipyard above planet Earth, Ramirez was going over the data and trying to figure out what was going on. He had three engineering advisors all trying to explain the situation to him while a man in a purple Starfleet uniform with two gold braids on his sleeve stood in a corner watching. The man's position was relaxed as if he really didn't need to be there. Ramirez stood up quickly and slammed his fist into the table and looked at the three men, an Andorian, a Tellarite, and a human. He tried to steady himself, but his voice was loud and angry. Gentlemen, you are giving me excuses, not results. What is the delay? The Andorian captain, by his rank braid, said, I put a lot of blame on the Vulcans. They are still deliberating whether or not they should leave the Federation. The Tellrite, a lieutenant commander, grunted, You would. Before the human, also a captain, could say anything, Ramirez crossed his hands in front of himself in a sweeping motion. Enough! The human captain said, The fact of the matter is, Admiral, we do not have the manpower to finish the two ships fast enough. Many of these systems are tested with the Ares class, but we're adding a brand new computer system by Dr. Richard Daystrom. Many of our system engineers haven't had time to integrate the new Deutronic computer. Not to mention, you took the majority of our best engineers from this project and put them on the Ares project. Ramirez sat back down and placed his head in his left hand. What? The man in the back in a purple uniform wearing a Starfleet command patch stood up straight. He had closed cropped brunette hair and a mustache. Though it looked like he was allergic to Retinox 5, the truth was actually a mystery to many. He also wore two rings, one on each hand. The left one had a yellow stone while the right had a green stone. He stepped forward and said, Admiral, Admiral Williams Jeffrey authorized the construction of the Constitution class two years before the war broke out. Once it did, and things were looking bad, one of the last things Admiral Slater did was sign off on the construction of the second Constitution class and put Bob Aprils in charge. Bob rescued a colony ship last year around the same time. The Constitution's been out and proven herself against the Klingons, but this last attack, she didn't fare too well. D4Es took too much of a toll, and we had to take her apart before we could put her back together. Ramirez groaned. I still don't hear a solution, Ambassador Raynar. Raynar moved forward and placed his fists on the desk leaning forward. My solution, Admiral, is bringing in an alliance that wants to join the Federation. As long as they are given the same rights as any sentient species, they are filled with engineers and scientists that wish to help. Ramirez nodded. Almost as good as done. Who are they? Raynar smiled. The Cations and Canine Alliance. The human commander laughed. Are you serious, Raynar? I know you're one hell of an engineer, but come on. You expect us to work besides cats and dogs? Ramirez looked up at the commander and replied, That's exactly what I expect you to do. Human commander moved up. He said, But sir, need I remind you, people won't take them any more seriously than I do. Fleet Captain Garth has a Jack Russell Terrier. Captain Anderson has a Tabby Cat and Captain Travis has a Labrador. Are you telling me any of them would see the cats and dogs walking on two legs any different than their pets? Ramirez smiled darkly. If I order them to, yes. Which is exactly what I am ordering you to do. Raynar, get him. Raynar smiled and nodded. Got him. Ramirez nodded. Good. I'll have the Federation Council send over terms for them to go over as they join us in the fight against the Klingons. Raynar gave the Admiral a two-fingered salute before heading off. 2255 Raynar, in an updated uniform, still purple in color, 
sat in the interview chair and smiled. And that's how the Cations and Canine Alliance joined Starfleet. It wasn't easy for them at first, but when they arrived and went to work on both Constitution and Enterprise, well, no one saw them as only animals after that. They had become respected members of the Federation. They saved the day and sent Garth all the help he needed. Of course, the Enterprise was still only in her shakedown phase, but that proved that she could do just about anything. Epilogue for Warren Captain Garth and Captain April walked down the halls of the Enterprise towards the transporter room. Garth said, I gotta say, Bob, this is an impressive ship. April nodded and smiled. Thanks, Kel. This ship means a lot to me. I've been with her the entire construction. Garth chuckled. I can see that, and you take a lot of pride in her. April turned to him. True, but I wouldn't be anywhere without the Deuteronic computer Dr. Daystrom invented. As the two continued walking, Dr. Daystrom and a Cation in a red uniform walked up the adjacent hallway. The Cation said, We've put upgraded transistors in the Enterprise. Your computer was very compatible with them. Daystrom grumbled a bit and said, This is true, but you seem to be one of the rare people to accept the computer as it is. Before the Cation could say anything, the two bumped into Garth and April. Garth looked at Daystrom and asked, Jaconde? Daystrom looked insulted. I beg your pardon? April smiled and said, Fleet Captain Calvin Garth, this is Dr. Richard Daystrom, the man who built the Deuteronic computer and won both the Nobel and Z. Magnica awards. Garth nodded and held out his hand. My apologies, you look like a friend I lost, Captain Imari Jaconde. He was the commanding officer of the USS Artemis. Daystrom took his hand and shook it. I heard about him. I'm sorry for your loss, Captain. Garth gave him a sad smile. Thank you. The two groups passed each other and headed towards their respective destinations. Garth would always remember his friend and the sacrifice he and his crew had made to save the others. The end. <laughs>